Hi, folks. Uh, in this session, okay. By the way, I'm Keshav Murthy. I'm the director of engineering at uh, Couchbase. I manage the development of uh, Nickel uh, query language. Oh, it's off. Okay, reset. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the last talk of the Couchbase Connect 2015. I'm Keshav Murthy. I manage the Nickel query development uh, within uh, Couchbase um, R&D. So before I talk, the big question I have is, there's a game going on at 6 PM. You have 45 minutes to get to the nearest big screen TV. So I'm standing between you and the big game. Uh, and of course, uh, the folks uh, who are uh, looking at it from the live stream have the luxury of just switching over. But it's a, the topic is uh, interesting. The topic is uh, challenging. And topic is something that enterprise architects uh, you know, have to deal with day in and day out. And the decisions uh, you make are long lasting and have a big impact. So let's look at what are the things enterprise architects worry about when they have to design the requirements, design the application, and choose a database platform? And there are a number of decisions to make. And uh, within that, you know, like we say, every layer about data can recycle and can restart. But the data layer keeps memory of what you did before. So it's pretty important. Uh, that's why uh, scalability and the uh, rest of the issues within, within the data layer is a challenging field. It's a, uh, it's a field that's uh, undergoing a tremendous amount of uh, transformation. So uh, let's look at what are the challenges, what are the options you have at this point in the journey. So we look at uh, what are the general requirements. Your, uh, uh, your particular application requirements uh, may vary. Uh, but then what a look at, uh, let's look at what are the requirements from the data layer. And, uh, and I want to just bring out the point of, you know, with Nickel, what has changed? What does Nickel change as far as the Couchbase application development on Couchbase, uh, Couchbase uh, itself? So let's get right to it. Rapid application development is a need of the day, right? Previously, we used to have uh, application uh, releases, uh, you know, every six months, every year. 18 months used to be the tr traditional cycle. Now it's not even every uh, month or every other month. It's every day some people uh, develop and uh, some people d deploy a newer version of the web applications every few hours. So speed is the name of uh, game. If you, if, you don't, if you can't change your uh, application, deploy rapidly, you, are, you basically lose out. So changing the speed of application development has brought in the speed, of, I mean, the speed to the data layer as well. You cannot say whether it was a physical schema change or a logical uh, schema change. We used to have shutdown time. Every three months, if you want to change, wait for, a, wait for the three month period. At, at that time, you would have a downtime. Now, you will have to wait for a long time before uh, somebody uh, allows you to shut down uh, your, your up application to redeploy a new application, right? Uh, so it's very costly, right? So, so we want to uh, avoid that. And then the second point is scalability. You know, somebody said, if you are not designed to scale, you haven't designed your system to succeed. Right? So you have to design your system so that if there is an uptake of your system, you can actually scale. You can't say, when com somebody comes back and says, oh, we love this system, we, we are going to get more users, you can't say, no, 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 no. This was just a prototype. We'll come back. We'll have to redesign the whole thing if I have to scale from 10 users to uh, 1,000 users or 10,000 users. You have to design for scale from the ground up. Yeah. Consistent performance is, uh, uh, it, it, it's not enough if you have a, a great performance for 10 or 100 users. You have to have consistent performance 
for thousands of users. How many of you attended the Amadeus keynote today morning? Okay, at least half of you. The numbers they showed were staggering. They have 2.5 million reads per second in their cluster, in their Couchbase cluster. One million writes per second in their cluster. I mean, that's an incredible number, right? And two things I take away from their presentation. Their application performs very well, and it, its performance is predictable. As they increase this amount of data, as they increase the uh, number of concurrent users, the system, their application, as well as their uh, Couchbase uh, deployment, scales predictably. That means they, if they guesstimate that uh, the increase in the traffic, increase in the number, amount of data, they can plan to scale out without disrupting the existing uh, ecosystem. That's, that's the kind of uh, performance we are talking about. Imagine, they manage close to a billion uh, travel schedules uh, every year, and they have to be able to scale out, scale out and manage that without having a downtime. If they are down, their uh, revenue will be down. So it's downtime directly correlates with uh, revenue and, of course, customer experience. And always online, so I, I don't have to emphasize this. So this is, the, these are, this is the modern application that we are dealing with. So how can enterprise architects uh, uh, design a system that can handle all these things. Have we solved every problem that enterprise architects uh, um, would, uh, uh, would need? No, we are on a journey, right? We have solved a number of uh, issues. Nobody has, uh, ha has had a, a holy grail solution where uh, you can uh, scale out unlimited with uh, complete consistency, uh, consistency for every, every query. So the, right now we are at a point where we have a number of options uh, uh, to deal with those situations. So let's discuss uh, all those options and what Nickel brings to this whole uh, solution. And uh, Nickel is, a, is another, web, another uh, tool, another weapon for you to think about uh, uh, the data infrastructure within uh, Couchbase ecosystem. OK? So we discussed the application level requirements. Let's uh, look at the uh, requirements for your development for the database development itself. So again, there is a checklist of things. Uh, there are actually, you know, when somebody puts out an RFI for a database uh, platform for, uh, for an enterprise application, it's usually anywhere from, uh, Anil, you tell me, 30 to 200 pages, right? So I have filled uh, RFIs for, for uh, enterprises which are you know, pages and pages long. So this is just a you know, very, very high level uh, view of uh, what things enterprises care about uh, when, it uh, when it comes to choosing a uh, data platform. Like I said earlier, you have to be able to develop a cool application and deploy it very quickly so that you get the customer feedback and see what the uptake is. But at the same time, you worry about uh, scale out. If, if there's an uptake, you want to be able to quickly scale out this uh, application platform and the data platform as well. So the key word here is quick, right? Quick development, quick deployment, quick scaling, and uh, rapid uh, uh, feedback. So having a good facility to model your data, having great set of APIs, because there is no one single best API to access the data. Your best APIs are the ones that your team knows very well and can say, oh, if we use this, we, we can uh, uh, develop and sh sh have, have the first version out uh, quickly. So great set of APIs is uh, quite important. And then, you know, with NoSQL, you know, e even in uh, traditional uh, database system, you had the query language, which was always been SQL, but APIs were in all different languages. So in uh, uh, 
uh, NoSQL, we have gotten a journey in, 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 the, in the other way. All the NoSQL systems started out with great set of APIs, whether it was uh, uh, Python, PHP, C++, Java, whatever, your favorite language. They all had a great set of uh, APIs to operate on the uh, key value store. Now, those APIs help you to build you know, very sophisticated uh, applications, no doubt. I know many of you have uh, uh, seen, uh, uh, s seen the talks from uh, Ryanair to DirecTV and so forth who have developed applications. But as you move up the stack, as the amount of uh, sophistication uh, increases in your application, you have to be able to not, not just get and set at a single document level, you, you want better uh, filtering, better projection, better aggregation. All these things, you know, when database bases don't provide this, the application requirements don't go away. Applications, uh, developers start uh, doing the workaround of doing this simple expressions or aggregations or joins everything in their application. And soon it gets to be, you know, performance issues, quality control, everything comes, uh, comes into problem. So uh, having a good query language is important for the data platform as well. And somebody said, you know, it's great if you have great APIs and uh, data models and everything. The eventual goal is you know, performance, performance, performance. We need to get uh, a great performance, consistent performance across the board. These days, when I talk to customers, they take the availability of the uh, systems in NoSQL for granted because that's one of the main reasons to have the uh, NoSQL uh, uh, systems uh, to start with. But not too long ago, availability was a big deal in traditional systems. You had to have hot standbys, replication, uh, so that was a big, a big thing. But uh, I think in yesterday's uh, uh, keynote, Perry showed three clicks, you add a new, new node, everything gets rebalanced. Availability is, is a great story in, uh, in NoSQL. So that's, uh, that's another thing to uh, worry about. Consistency. How many of you have heard of uh, CAP theorem? Okay, half of you. So for the rest of you, I'll let me give a 30 second view of what uh, uh, CAP theorem is. CAP theorem stands for consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. In a distributed system, you have to choose whether you want, <laughs> you can only have two, but there's a catch there also. You know, the, the, this question came up because in a distributed system, you want to have partition tolerance. If you don't have partition tolerance, then you just have a single system, there's nothing is available. So that's take, taken for granted. Well, then you only have choice between availability and consistency. You want consistent data or you want available data? So it was thought of as a hard choice originally. Okay? So now, even though it's a theorem, it is proven that you can't have all the three, but that cap, all the NoSQL systems are attacking this cap theorem at the edges. Can we make it tunable? Can we make it parameterized? How can we make, it, make the consistency as near as uh, uh, possible, reading your own rights, right? So, so, so it's, so the, 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 yeah, I don't want to say you, you can always have, uh, you know, consistency and partition tolerance and availability, but when you choose partition tolerance and availability, your consistency, it, uh, we provide, and many other uh, NoSQL systems provide tunable consistency, but it's not completely consistent, but it's, uh, it, we are getting there. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a journey, but it's completely consistent, available, and partition tolerant database systems do not exist. Theorem so far says it cannot exist. We'll see. Um, again, flexible uh, data model, and uh, data model is important. We'll uh, revisit that uh, again. And when you have a distributed system, you can't SSH into each node and try to manage that, right? That's, <laughs> that's the last, when it's not reachable, that's the last, uh, uh, last route to get to the node. You want a good uh, level of abstraction, so with a single GUI or single uh, 
uh, command line, you should be able to manage this distributed system very easily. You want to be able to monitor uh, and, ha and have a system that reports back to you the health of the system very, very easily. So, so these are the kind of the high level things, okay? So we looked at the data requirement. Let's look at the data management itself at a very broad level. So how is the data being managed? How is the, uh, uh, you know, there is data when you, yesterday Ravi had a nice, uh, nice quote. When you move your thumb on, a, on your uh, smartphone, you generate data, right? It may be few bytes of data, it is still data, right? When you run a complex uh, ETL uh, job on Hadoop, again, it's, it generates uh, more data. So data is everywhere, but this is the whole spectrum of uh, data, right? So you have uh, data that is managed in uh, bytes and blocks on your disk and storage, and then you have, this is, this is just bytes and blocks, it has no meaning in, at that level, right? SCSI as SATA drives have no idea whether it's uh, banking transactions or uh, uh, just text files. But on the right hand side, or to my left hand side, we have highly structured, highly annotated, highly described data with all the MDM data stored in curated warehouses. And it's very structured. So that's the spectrum of data you're, you're dealing with, okay? So obviously, there's a cost difference between the data management at the storage level and data management at the database level. The cost difference goes from, you know, if you have a highly reliable, you know, if you have any uh, disk from any Tom, Dick, or Harry, you can get, you know, in Costco you get, uh, you know, terabyte or two terabytes of disk for uh, 80 bucks. That's not what I'm talking about. This is 10K per terabyte is for, you know, EMC, Isilon systems, or high-end uh, storage systems for enterprise, they cost up to, up to uh, 10, 10 grand for a terabyte. If you want to store the same, 10, uh, same terabyte of uh, data on RDBMS, after uh, curating it, after uh, modeling it, it costs up to 100K to 200K of you know, license, hardware, rest of the cost, uh, human cost, on RDBMS, okay? So can the RDBMS manage many, many, you know, tens of, or even hundreds of terabytes of data? Absolutely, right? There are many distributed systems, uh, teradata and so forth, they manage uh, hundreds of terabytes. But can every uh, company afford it? Or, or uh, afford it for, for example, operational data? No. It cannot, right? That's the challenge. How do you manage big data at a reasonable amount of cost and get value out of it? And between these two spectrum, we have you know, Hadoop, which is addressing the analytical space for most part. And Hadoop has its own Hadoop uh, you know, input-output formats. Hadoop's hive and pig, uh, you know, hive tables and uh, pig formats. It's bringing a little bit more structure into the data, and it's bringing down the cost from 10K to 1K per terabyte. It is reliable, it is distributed, okay? But Hadoop is designed mainly for analytical use case. On the other side, we have operational big data. This is where no SQL systems uh, uh, operate on. You, want, you, don't, you don't have, uh, well, you may have analytical needs, but these are not the analytical needs that do machine learning or AI, that jobs that run, runs uh, uh, overnight. The, the, these are operational cases where you have, uh, you know, uh, you, classic use cases, the Amadeus, where you have ma massive number of concurrent uh, uh, queries run, running on the system and massive number of number of updates going on in the system, system as well, right? That's where operational big data. Can the RDBMS handle, handle operational big data? It can handle massive amount of op operations. Oracle Rack, for example. 
you can scale out the Oracle rack up to, you know, I've seen up to four systems, maybe eight. If you have beefy systems with uh, infinite band with uh, very high end storage, yeah, you can scale, scale out very well. But the cost is going to run up very, very, very quickly, okay? And, you know, four, six systems is kind of the limit to it. But here, we are talking about not the systems in single digits, and again, in, uh, even in Oracle, it's, it scales on a shared disk system, okay? In operational store, you have, the idea is scale out where systems do not have any shared resources, right? That, that gives you this availability as well. Oracle can scale out in terms of performance. You have shared disk, you have a single point of failure. You have to set up uh, enterprise uh, uh, replication and so forth. It's, it's a pretty you know, messy affair to set up a uh, replicated uh, rack system, and again, the cost increases dramatically. So this is the area that operational big data folks uh, we are trying to handle. Increase the scale of your operational application really, really quickly without increasing the cost. Right? If you take the general trend of the cost, this is an order of magnitude less than the RDBMS, right? But while you gain the scalability, you use something. You know, yesterday, the inventor of SQL, uh, Don Chamberlain, uh, was here uh, attending the conference. So we were uh, uh, generally talking. So it was, I, I was telling him, you know, it's actually a compliment that you know, the NoSQL community, even though they meant no RDBMS, they actually said NoSQL. They, they picked on the language uh, to say NoSQL. There is a reason for it, no, apart from the fact that it's easy to say NoSQL than no RDBMS. Uh, SQL is hard to implement on a distributed system. That's, if it was easy, it would have been done, and uh, everybody would, somebody would have implemented SQL on a distributed system, and uh, uh, everybody uses uh, that for their scale out, and we all go home. Everybody is uh, fine and happy. We didn't have to discuss all the issues of uh, uh, cap theorem. Uh, but it's hard, right? So, so, uh, so in, in uh, NoSQL system, Mongo has its own uh, query language. We'll, uh, uh, if you attended uh, yeah, Yingi's uh, talk on the BigQuery uh, landscape earlier, he covered a lot of the query language and uh, comparison between uh, Mongo, uh, Couchbase, Cassandra, Impala, everything. So, so that, that's the landscape we are dealing with, okay? Okay, so now let's, the focus again was what has Nickel changed for, uh, 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 for enterprise architects with Couchbase 4.0? And what has Couchbase 4.0 changed compared to uh, Couchbase 3.0? Okay, we have to start at the beginning. This is uh, Couchbase 3.0. Couchbase 3.0, you can scale out your data service uh, you know, close to linear scale. Every node was symmetrical. Every node maintained the data. Every node, uh, when you created views, the views, the, uh, were also distributed evenly among uh, all different nodes. And when you queried views, the query was partitioned, sent to all the different nodes, and we gathered the results and ca came back. Same thing with the data. When you, the greatness of uh, Couchbase was when you did a put and get uh, on the document key, we knew exactly where to go, and we could get it in microseconds, which was you know, pheno uh, phenomenal. So we could do uh, all that again on a symmetrical uh, deployment, uh, uh, and it supported scale out, and uh, the Amadeus uh, example I told you earlier runs this uh, system. They run it very, very successfully. And uh, here, even on that system, the data is replicated. Each document is replicated to multiple nodes. That's how you get the partition tolerance, okay? You you could have two, three copies of the, uh, of the same data, but we would know who is the master at any moment, right? at any, whether it's nanosecond or uh, uh, picosecond, 
we, we, we would know who is the master of the particular document, and uh, uh, we would always uh, refer to that. When a node goes down, there is a reliable uh, rebalance, uh, rebalancing and takeover uh, algorithm. We choose which is the new master and uh, uh, trans transfer the authority to that, uh, that node. So essentially, 3.0 was a symmetric deployment, easy to scale, extraordinarily uh, performant, and highly uh, re reliable system. So that's the availability within a uh, sing single node. So this is what uh, you know, people take it for, for granted in NoSQL systems, and that's what uh, people uh, come to love about NoSQL systems. So did I skip? I thought there was a couple of more slides that I sorry, okay. So I'll I'll come back to somehow the order has changed, so okay. What is in for what has changed in the 4.0 in the big picture, and then we'll get into the details. 4.0 adds two new significant services. One is the query service. One is the index service. You can, the deployment is just like before, very few clicks. You install, few clicks. You, you add the new nodes. The ease of use remains, uh, remains the same. The index service provides you the global secondary index that you have heard uh, in the rest of the conference. And, and query service is the one that implements the nickel query language, supports the query processing, processing on top of this uh, Couchbase um, uh, database that supports the flexible da data model. Right? This is the thing. But there's a twist. So while you can deploy a symmetric uh, deploy deployment, this is our you know, uh, recommended uh, way to do it. So wha what changes here? You continue to deploy the data in n number of uh, nodes, so you can scale out horizontally. You can uh, get your reliable uh, performance uh, and throughput on n number of nodes, just like before on the, on the data nodes. Your index node streams the data, streams the updates from your data nodes into the index service and keeps up, with the, uh, keeps up with the changes that is happening to the data. And query service is the one that implements the nickel, as I said before, and that's a stateless service that orchestrates the usage of the in, uh, right index, usage of the right data, and processes the query and gives you the answer. We have earlier uh, talks which go into detail about how the orchestration is done, how the planning is done, how the index selection is done. You can look at the uh, recording uh, earlier. So, but uh, the whole idea is you have a SQL-like query language that provides you a much better uh, you know, a query processing capability in addition to the in addition to the existing key-value APIs in our system. And of course, once you have these uh, nodes that, that are running independent services, you can also size them differently, depending on your uh, uh, application need, depending on the variation in your uh, uh, work, workload. That's what we call as multidimensional scaling. So you can scale your data, your uh, uh, query, and the index uh, by deploying them on you know, different number of uh, nodes, different hardware, different memory, so it le left to you. You can still go back to the uniform uh, deployment, but you have the flexibility of deploying them on uh, uh, distinct hardware. So that, that's the uh, main thing. Okay. So given, given this, so 
So we added a added nickel and query service into Couchbase 4.0. So why did we add this? Okay. Real world data has rich structure. Previously, you had to flatten this data. Now, yes, flattening works uh, very well if uh, on the databases. Databases are optimized for uh, single node performance. Like I said, many times when you have large number of uh, concurrent users, the uh, scalability and the performance and the overhead of joins becomes an issue. Sometimes when there is, uh, when it makes sense, it makes sense to store the object as is. So databases will, uh, uh, you know, uh, so databases that support this management of the structure has a better value. You have, you can't denormalize your way into a single entity. So you have different entities in the real world that have relationships. So these relationships have to be represented in the database as well. And even when you have designed the schema well, the values that you stored can change. What you had assumed to be a numerical value could change to an alphanumeric uh, late, uh, later on. What you had assumed to be a scalar value can become a rich, uh, rich value. People, you know, 20, year, 20 years ago, people, everybody had one single phone number. Now everybody has, you know, two, three, four, who knows, right? So everybody used to have one single email. Everybody has 10 emails, email IDs now, right? So it, 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 it's, the assumptions change, right? And structure itself can, can change, just like how the value itself can change, the structure, uh, the example I gave was, you know, instead of one, when you go, go from one to 10, it becomes from a scalar value into an, into an array. So, so, the, so things change. So now, for this data, relational model solved many of the issues, but not everything, right? So in the relational model, you had to flatten the data, and people dealt with the flattening of the uh, data by using uh, uh, you know, the impedance mismatch between the object application uh, layer to the uh, flat relational layer was translated through the ORM mapping like uh, Hibernate and uh, other OR uh, mappers, uh, but they, it still worked reasonably well um, in many cases. In JSON data model, you, you don't need any assembly anymore. Again, these are the things that you know, in our uh, workshop and in the talks uh, Gerald uh, had uh, earlier today and yesterday, we have gone into detail, so I won't go too much into detail. So the, the, uh, basically in NoSQL, in relational model, it used the relational model, that means everything was flattened. Whereas in JSON model, you have, you, you have the option to represent the objects in a hierarchical way, as well as, you know, previously if you, ha if you had to um, represent relationships, you can model the relationships, but querying on relationships became a big issue, okay? So in uh, uh, Mongo, for example, you don't have the concept of joins or subqueries, right? So you, so you had to implement what is known as client-side join. So you, you implemented nested loop, uh, kind of nested loop joins on your program. But what happens when you have to do aggregation and grouping by after the joins? Big problem, right? So, so there are uh, uh, issues with uh, pushing processing back to the client, but when you could denormalize your uh, uh, d uh, data to a large extent, uh, the simple qu query system in Mongo does solve some of the problems. Okay, so what is nickel? Let me use the tagline, if you haven't seen somewhere around these pillars. S JSON plus SQL is nickel. Okay, so I don't have a mathematical uh, proof for the theorem, but it's a marketing theorem. So we have used all the good things in uh, SQL. That means the select, join, project operations, and also the layering. You know, In uh, uh, SQL, it's not that you just have select from where. Once you have select from, you can have a 
subquery there and, and get the results and do further processing. In the where class, you can have a subquery and do pretty complex uh, uh, subqueries in there. And once you have query block, you can do set operations between, you can do union, union all, intersect, accept. I mean, that's the beauty of uh, SQL. And, you know, full disclosure, you know, I've worked on uh, SQL systems for like 25 years now. I won't say, oh, SQL was uh, designed 25 years, uh, or 40, 40 years ago. Yeah, it was originally started, with, started 40 years ago. There have been continuous innovations, improvements on SQL, uh, SQL since then. That's why in 2007, 2008, SQL was pretty mature, mature and standardized. That's why they said, oh man, if I have to implement and support this SQL on a distributed system, it's crazy. Let's not do SQL, no SQL, right? So the idea was hard. So whereas, I mean, so it was hard enough to do SQL on a distributed system, so what Nickel does is to take on this hard problem directly and, and solve it, right? Have you solved everything with, uh, uh, every problem with SQL? No, but we have addressed large number of objections, issues, like, like I said, selects, joins, projections, aggregations. Those are the kind of the basic building blocks of uh, SQL. The, we support that. Set operations and multi-layering uh, of the SQL. So, so you can have very complex uh, uh, queries. You saw some of the examples from uh, some of the talks from Looker, Tableau, Informatica. They all generate pretty complex uh, queries. So, so we handle, uh, handle all of them. What's the time now? I ran up. Okay, so yeah, it's a rich set of uh, query language. It's not for just for select. It's it's for uh, uh, select, insert, update, delete. We support all of these things. Okay. Okay, I won't go into joins. We have uh, uh, we have discussed this before, but basically the idea is you can do joins when you have modeled your data in a parent-child relationship. So you can join between multiple key spaces within, uh, um, uh, within Nickel, so, so that, that, uh, that's a very useful thing as well. That's the basic uh, join operator on the distributed system. Okay, so now, once you have the full query language, how do you perform well, right? How do you perform this query very, very well? So we have added a new indexing service called the Global Secondary Index. We talked about, you know, in Couchbase 3.0, your data, your views, the results of the views, everything was uniformly distributed across the node. So there were uh, da data that belongs to, uh, view data that belongs to a particular uh, data set was stored within the particular node in the distributed system. That means every query you have to scatter and gather, right? That's an expensive affair when you have to support uh, uh, tens of thousands of, or millions of operations per second. In this case, all the query belong, all the uh, keys belonging to a particular uh, index is stored in a single node. That means you can uh, you can have a pretty big uh, index uh, service node that answers or performs all the uh, uh, indexing operations for a, for a particular set of queries. The second thing is you can also have multiple redundant indexes, uh, so, so you can scale out the index service as well. You can also, if, it, if you have an index that is massive, you can also partition the index among these three nodes so you can have a load balance. You have multiple options there as well. The query service itself is paralyzed at every level possible for uh, perf performance. So you're, if you have simple queries to uh, fetch the data, do basic processing, it, uh, it, it, it's fine. If you have complex qu uh, qu uh, queries that do operation analytics, we paralyze uh, your uh, uh, scans, uh, fetch joins and filters, so it performs very well as well. Okay, so we talked about the agile uh, application development uh, earlier for a, going from a 
flat uh, structure, you are going into a document structure or a JSON structure, which is both uh, hierarchical and can represent relationships and uh, vector values uh, very well. So now, okay, we had a detailed uh, talk on modeling, so I'll give you just a few tips on the modeling before we run out of time. The traditional entity relationship uh, uh, model is an abstract way to describe the domain information. So, and once you describe that, you can map that uh, model into the database uh, directly, right? The entity relationship uh, uh, model was developed for a relational database system, but in the context of Nickel, because we support all the operations of you know, uh, SQL with the uh, selects, joins, and projections, and subqueries, and nest, and unnest, and so forth for a uh, hierarchical data, that same rules uh, can get you most of the modeling information within uh, Nickel as well. So I'll skip through some of the uh, modeling de details uh, because I don't want to hold you fr from the NBA game. So let's, uh, okay. So let me, so okay. These are all, all the things that, we, that I said in terms of you can, what you can do. You can represent hierarchies, you can embed the, the data, you can uh, represent relationships. But what can you not do, right? So when, you, when I say relationships, we don't have a hard-coded foreign key relationship set up. It's a logical relationship based on the data that you have stored. We don't have a foreign key con constraint within us. So, so you have to uh, manage, that, uh, manage that manually. We don't have cascaded deletes and so forth. And uh, we support both inner join and uh, uh, left outer joins. So, so the, you have flexibility there. If you want full outer join, that you have to do, uh, do that through multiple union alls uh, uh, yourself. OK? So you have, yeah. You have to identify the dangling dangling. Basically, if you think that there's going to be dangling references in your uh, uh, data set, you have to run bad jobs doing the left outer join, find the dangling references, and deal with it manually right now, because we don't have the foreign key constraints implemented within the database. OK. OK, we have a great database. We have a great indexing service, query service. It's useless if you don't have great set of uh, application programming interfaces. Query lang our query service talks REST through and through. All the APAs that we have from uh, Couchbase, all the ODBC, JDBC drivers, they all talk REST to our uh, uh, REST to the query service. It doesn't mean that you just have to use REST wi uh, within uh, directly from your applications. We have rich set of uh, APIs that are customized for Nickel. In every language that you, uh, that you have, if there's an API that is not in your favorite language, just because language was invented last week, please talk to Matt. <laughs> he will provide it uh, for you, OK? Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, for s quick uh, scripting, if you, you know, if you know uh, rest if you you know this is the smallest database pro program that I have ever written uh, in my my life six line program gets you connection and gets the results uh, so so that's a uh, that's a one that's the wonder of uh, rest so I have an example of uh, node.js uh, program here uh, again it is the basic connectivity basic ob uh, object level abstraction is available. And the other thing is, you know, even though here we say you connect to, I mean, here it's a local host, you can give any IP address here. The other thing that our SDKs provide is it abstracts the complete cluster. The developer develops on their Mac, you test it on a cluster, you test the same uh, application on a cluster, you deploy it on a massive cluster. So there is no impedance mismatch. There is nothing lost in translation. 
because eventually, even if you develop on a Mac, you want, you want to be able to deploy that application on a, on a massive uh, cluster uh, without any changes. It should be able to scale out. So that's, uh, that's the advantage of uh, using the SD, SDKs. We don't have to manage this uh, uh, cluster level uh, IPs uh, yourself. Other thing is, you know, we talked about the consistency, availability, and so forth. So the query, uh, the qu consistency is tunable. So all the options uh, are available with the SDKs, and you can specify that within your uh, uh, query. And sim just like how you would pass in these uh, consistent values in the REST API, you, ha you, you have those domain-specific language uh, customized um, extension as well. OK? Uh, performance. OK. So this is kind of an you know, old point uh, that uh, you know, Couchbase uh, has from its inception. Uh, Couchbase has the heritage of uh, membase. That means you know, people are used to having the database in the back end, a caching layer in the front end. So what Couchbase does is, is to combine the memcache layer and the database layer and replace a single uh, Couchbase uh, system can act both as a cache as well as a persistent store. Right? That's the beauty. So less number of components means it's easy to manage. And like I said, just to repeat what uh, our customer Ramadaya said, great performance and great predictable performance. Both are important. And, and, and you get that here. You get availability for free in a, in a single internal cluster, but when you want to plan for a you know, disaster recovery or a or dis geo uh, distributed application uh, access, we have uh, XDCR, basically cross data center replication, which supports not only unidirectional but also bidirectional master master, basically uh, master master or active active uh, re replication. Conflict resolution is handled automatically for you. OK. You have a cluster which shares all the information. And in, within each node of the cluster, we have components that manage the services within the cluster. So every uh, node, whether it's a query service or an index service or a data service, comes with a manageability component. It's installed and managed automatically. So you get these things for free. Security. Any of your security concerns, please talk to Anil or Don. They'll solve your problems. So I won't. again, security is an ongoing uh, area of uh, improvement. Every release, we improve that. We have uh, auditing and uh, LDAP uh, management uh, features in 4.0. Again, due to lack of time, I won't go. Summary. OK, this is the takeaway from, for all the enterprise architects. Couchbase 4.0 not only provides a highly scalable uh, key value store, it provides a higher level of abstraction, high level SQL-like language that scales, that works on flexible data model based on JSON. Okay? And it uses, it's a sophisticated query processor. It uses the traditional optimization techniques to speed up your, your query so you don't have to do any optimizations yourselves. OK, I will, again, these are all the, it's not, I talked about the query service. I talked about uh, uh, the indexing method. There are new services that are uh, being added to the uh, Couchbase uh, as well. Uh, Couchbase 4.0 is going to have a spatial index uh, service as well as a full text index. Those are the areas uh, that you should keep an eye on for uh, further improvement uh, in our future releases. OK, back to the landscape, uh, data management landscape you saw earlier. So what we saw is between the RDBMS bit and the NoSQL database, there is a big gap here. Big gap. The gap is basically, to fill up that gap, you need to have a very good query language, 
fully supported transactions. Uh, so we are trying to fill that gap right now with nickel, right? Nickel is trying to, uh, nickel has provided a higher level uh, uh, language, so it makes your application development easier, it makes your uh, 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 scalability easier, your developer productivity will uh, improve, um, and it, you get all the benefits of the scalable Couchbase platform. So that's the takeaway um, message from here. Thanks for staying back. You may have missed a few minutes of the finals. Thanks for uh, sticking with me. Have a great day. See you next year. <laughs>